Greetings, music historians, and thanks for coming by. This is PosterCentral.com's video blog, and I'm Pete Howard, and this is a monster piece because it's so seminal. If you know your early rock and roll history, you know exactly what Jackie Branston means. It means maybe the first rock and roll record, right? Maybe, though. I'll, I'll hit that a little bit uh, in, a, in a moment. But this is from 1952, and uh, it's from the Club Plantation in Phoenix City, Alabama. And Phoenix City was notorious during the 40s and 50s for being a mecca for, you know, hookers and gambling and organized crime and everything. It was really basically Las Vegas down in the southeast, wasn't it? And that was because it was right by a U.S. Army training center in Fort Benning, Georgia. So um, <laughs> Phoenix City actually had the nickname of Sin City, USA, which Vegas would come along and steal or reclaim or whatever uh, uh, later on. But anyway, Jackie, Jackie Branston here. I mean, you know, Ike Turner's right-hand guy for much of uh, Ike's career and stuff, certainly in these early days. And uh, it's really, I like about this, it's a, it's a really in-your-face boxing-style concert poster. Very um, plain, straightforward, no printer's credit uh, down at the bottom or anything, but 14 by 22 cardboard. Very, uh, you know, uh, aged. It's It's been hammered in a few of its corners and everything like that, but certainly never seen another one. And it's got, it's nice. It has a plug for chess records on there. And it's got great ticket locations, too. First of all, there's things like, you know, admission, a buck fifty, a dollar eighty-five at the door. Just that is great. Um, 10 p.m. till 2 a.m. But um, I love where tickets are being sold. I don't know if you can quite, if I can quite... I've got a handicap here with the way my desk is laid out, but how about tickets available at Shorty's Barber Shop and Dr. Jive's Record Shop? I mean, is that cool or what? So, but anyway, so we have Jackie Branston, born in Clarksdale, Mississippi, the home of the crossroads. Can't think of a better place for a blues or R&B guy to be born. And he's best known for creating, along with Ike Turner, what... I'm going to take it from many to some historians' site as the first rock and roll record, and that's Rocket 88. Now, interestingly, um, Sam Phillips of Sun Records recorded Rocket 88, and so sometime later, I'm not sure if it was a couple of years or whatever, probably after Elvis hit big, maybe it was a few years and a number of years, Sam Phillips, who's considered, of course, very authoritative and the guy who introduced Elvis to the world and stuff, started calling Rocket 88 the first rock and roll single or the first rock record and the press and the media picked up on it and it was sort of carried forth without being challenged until music historians got really serious I don't know if that was 70s, 80s, 90s or whatever but um, it's actually Rocket 88 to be perfectly frank although I'd love to embellish the poster more um, it's just one of many candidates there's a lot of R&B and jump blues hard-edged songs from the uh, 19, late 1940s there's a uh, um, you know, 50, 51, even Fats Domino's Fat Man, which I, The Fat Man, which I mentioned in another video, can lay claim to being the first rock record. But still, it was a very important, very influential hit. And it was a huge business mistake by Ike Turner. Um, Ike was on keyboards. Uh, Branston is given credit for writing this song, but uh, some sources say that actually Ike Turner wrote it. And um, when they, they cut the song, sort of just as a, you know, uh, uh, an amalgamation band, people weren't nearly as serious about who was doing what back then, other than creating the music. From a business standpoint, they didn't care that much. And Sam Phillips set the tape to Chess Records in Chicago, because when Sam recorded this in 51, he was not releasing rec He didn't have Sun Records label yet. He was just the Sun Recordings service in Memphis. So he sent the, the tape to uh, Chess Records up in Chicago is Jackie Brenston and his Delta Cats and uh, Chess went and put it out that way and so it was like a band that didn't really exist it was like Ike Turner's band and more than Jackie's but Jackie played sax and and sang and stuff and, and Chess put it out and it becomes this seminal R&B and rock and roll hit and Ike really just really took him the shorts for that one he was just it was a really bad historians have cited it as very unfortunate for Ike Turner but Jackie, um, you know, Jack, Ike obviously <laughs> got his due in the 60s with Ike and Tina Turner. He got his fame, he got his hits, but it was a long time before he got his hit. And um, so here, you know, Jackie had his, his day in the sun, um, and it was about eight months before this concert that Rocket 88 had spent a month at number one 
on the R&B charts. And so he was, Reston was really riding high on that record. Um, by the way, the tune, Rocket 88, is about a car. It's about Oldsmobile's Hydromatic Rocket 88, which had recently been introduced to the American public. Um, it was the fastest car on the road, called the Oldsmobile 88 for short sometimes, with a, the big Oldsmobile Rocket V8 engine as standard equipment. But of course, like all um, R&B uh, uh, records between 45 and 55, post-war, shall we call them, uh, it was all metaphorical. It was very much about booze and broads. Believe me, it was not just about automobiles. Um, and everyone borrowed so much back then, uh, musically and influentially and everything, um, that uh, that Rockin' 88 was largely based on the 47 song Cadillac Boogie by Jimmy Liggins. And Branston himself, in an interview, actually openly admitted that they're basically the same songs, the words were just changed. Woo! Man, the lawyers, if they got hold of that today, if that was done today. Um, and it was, um, and then it was also uh, preceded by Rocket 88 Boogie in 1949 by Pete Johnson. And then, of course, three years after this, Chuck Berry's Maybelline was also written about an automobile. But again, metaphorically, um, you know, the, uh, the automobile served as a metaphor for romantic prowess, if you will. Um, but anyway, Branston, you know, he came and went with this record, and so that's why you don't see a lot of his concert posters, and he, he did admit, he later said, I was a greenhorn, I had a hit record, but no sense. So, you know, based on the, um, you know, Ike being pissed that Jackie got all the credit and everything, they went their separate ways for a couple of years, and in uh, the next year, 53, Branston joined Lowell Folson's band, but in 55, he came back to, to Ike, tail between his legs, neither one had a hit on their own, and he was reduced to being Ike Turner's baritone sax player. Interestingly, in all the shows they did for the next few years, when they played together basically up till 62, Ike Turner would not let Jackie sing Rocket 88 in concert. He was just carrying that grudge, and, and one could perhaps say justifiably so. And poor Jackie, unfortunately, he never, never lived to see the age 50. He died of a heart attack at the age of 49 in the 1970s, probably from some fun and hard living. So anyway, great poster, never seen anything like it, one close to it, this or anything, from Phoenix City, Alabama. And I hope you enjoyed the musical history lesson today along with the piece of cardboard. So, okay, thanks a lot for coming by. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.